What's up everybody, it's Austin here. We are buying stocks today. I'm ignoring the negative headlines out there. I'm a long-term investor. Here is the portfolio, full transparency, $92,000. We are down $12,450 since February 15th, 2022. Let's jump over. I share this link down in the description of the video and in the first comment, it is to my savvy trader portfolio. This just allows me to basically copy my portfolio from my brokerage, which I just showed you for the transparency. And what this does is it sends updates out every time I buy or sell, and people can get those through email or SMS. And you can see everything I've done in here. You can see my performance. You can track it to the S&P 500. Anyways, if you wanna follow that, if you want those updates, hit it up, Savvy Trader, in the link. You can see all of that stuff transparently. Okay, what is Cloudflare? Let's talk about the business a little bit. We've gotta understand businesses before we invest money in them. So this is just an overview. You need to go deeper on a stock and do your own research, but they wanna build a better internet. Technology industry has undergone a massive transition from on-premise hardware and software that customers buy to services in the cloud that they rent. Regardless of where organizations are in their transition, they all face a common set of challenges. They exist in a complex, heterogeneous infrastructure environment, which exacerbates the fundamental problems of the internet more than ever, and the on-premise hardware boxes that they once relied upon to solve these problems were never designed to work in such an environment. Cloudflare is a global cloud services provider that delivers a broad range of services to businesses of all sizes and in all geographies, making them more secure, enhancing the performance of their business critical applications, and eliminating the cost and complexity of managing individual network hardware. Our network serves as a scalable, easy to use, unified control plane to deliver security, performance, and reliability across on-premise hybrid cloud and software as a service applications. We serve comprehensive customers needs across security, performance, and reliability. Let's jump into their 2022 investor presentation. The company was launched in 2010. They have 151,000 paying customers. Over 50% of their revenue comes from their large customers. They have about 3,000 employees and 76% gap gross margin. Since 2019, they've grown revenue at a 51% compound annual growth rate. From Q2 2021 to Q2 2022, this was their last quarter, they grew revenue at 54%. And then large customers, they define those as over $100,000 in annualized revenue, are up 66% compound annual growth rate from Q220 to Q222. Okay, if you've watched this channel, you've heard me talk about dollar-based net retention. This is the amount of revenue that they get from one year to the next from their previous customers, the customers that they already have. If it's above 100%, that means their current customers are spending more the next year than they did in the year prior. So at 126%, which was Q2 2022, that means current customers, and this this brings in the losses from the customers that they lose, uh, spend 26% more in revenue than they did the previous year. So that's 26% revenue growth right there just from their existing customers. Then they get new revenue from new customers that they bring in, and that's how we get to their total revenue growth number. Now, the thing about this is it is a sustainable growth number. As you can see, it it stays pretty level. And the CEO, Matthew Prince, has actually said they wanna get that number above 130%. So as that increases, they can lower their marketing spend because they're still they're getting more revenue from their current customers. And then as long as they're still able to grow customers and bring in new customers, they can sustain you know, 20, 30, 35% revenue growth for a very long time if they keep this dollar-based net retention up. So it's an important number to monitor. Okay, their gross margin has actually gotten a little bit better. We're gonna talk about the company's forecast and their long-term model. And here's the company's uh, Q3 2022 guidance, which we'll check when they report their next quarter, how they're tracking towards it, and their full year fiscal year 22 guidance. So we're looking for 45 to 46% revenue growth for Q3, a 0% operating margin, and basically flat earnings per share. And then for fiscal year 2022, uh, 47 to 48% year-over-year growth, 1% operating margin and EPS of three cents to four cents. In fiscal year 2022, their network CapEx, capital expenditures as a percentage of revenue, they're expected to be 12 to 14%. And they're anticipating a return to free cash flow positive in the second half of 2022. Long-term, this is where this business model starts to scale and get more efficient and get long-term profitable with continued revenue growth. So in Q2 2022, we had 79% growth margin. Their long-term model targets 75 to 77%. Sales and marketing as a percentage of revenue was 44%, and this is where they're gonna improve a lot. We talked about that to 27 to 29. Research and development was 20. They're expecting that to be 18 to 20. We still want to invest in research and development so they continue bringing out new products and improving the products that they already have. That's how they keep customers and grow new customers. 15% were general administrative. 
expenses, they wanna bring that down to eight to 10, and that leaves them with a non-GAAP operating margin up from 0% to 22% plus for their long-term model. That's how we get to profitability, that's how we get to long-term success and long-term shareholder returns. Okay, we did a little overview of the business. Again, this is just a start, do your own research, but now we jump over to fast graphs and we can forecast a little bit what a stock price could look at, look like based on you know certain growth numbers and a certain price sales multiple, right? And so what I've done here across the bottom, we have the analyst expectations. That's why you see these numbers 23, 23, and 12. That's how many number the number of analysts that they're they're taking these factors from for revenue growth per share out to fiscal year 2024. We have it growing at 41%. 36 percent and then 33 and then i have walked it down from 33 down to 29 27 and 25 by fiscal year 2027. the reality is these numbers are going to be different they could be higher they could be lower investing is about probabilities and i think this is a good baseline to build a scenario off of if anything i think long term cloudflare is going to be around for a long time and they're going to be able to grow revenue in double digits for a long time beyond 2027 right but we'll figure that out as we go and track it as we go Right now, the blended price sales ratio is at 20, okay? What I have put in here, this baseline we're using is a price to sales ratio of 10. So we can see what the return would be based off these revenue growth rates and different price to sales ratios. So out to 2024, remember we're long-term investors and that's really not that long. Uh, if it drops from a price sales ratio of 20 today down to 10 and they hit these revenue growth numbers, you are gonna lose 3% of your money, okay? I'm okay with that. That's a short term time period. And if the price sales multiple compresses by 50% by then and I lose money, fine. I'm going to be buying shares the whole time as long as a company is performing well. And then that would set you up to outperform for the long term. If they trade at a price sales ratio of 15, which I don't know that they will, but in 2024, with this revenue growth rate, it is possible. Then we'd be looking at a total return of 45% for an annualized return of 18%. Here's a secret to long-term investing. If you can hold longer and businesses do well, you could do just fine even if you lose money. So we keep that price sales ratio at a 10 out to 2027. This is a long time. If you don't want long-term investing, don't watch this channel. Then right now we're looking at a price sales ratio in 2027 of 10 with the revenue growth rates we talked about. We're looking at a 100% total return for 14% annualized. Even if the price to sales ratio is down to a five, which is down from 20 today. So that's like a 75% reduction in price sales ratio from here in 2027. As long as they hit these revenue growth numbers, you would still actually not lose money. It'd be super depressing five years because you'd just be flat the whole time, but you would not lose any money. If for some reason the price sales ratio is up at 15 or if they have higher revenue numbers, the stock price will be higher. And so then you'd be looking at the potential for a 200% return by 2027 for 23% annualized. That's the range. That's the range of possibilities. I mean, anything is possible, but we have some safety down to a price sales ratio of five out to 2027, where we're not getting crushed and losing our whole investment um, with some upside up to, you know, potentially a 200% return by 2027. I don't know what's gonna happen. This isn't investing advice, so go do your own research and make your own decisions.